Hello everyone and welcome back to Cooking with Suzanne. Today we're going to prepare a chicken dish with lots of wonderful Mediterranean flavors. And I'm going to first go through all the ingredients that you're going to need. And I'm doing a nice close up for you so that you can see the size of all the vegetables that you will need to prepare ahead of time for this dish. So let's get started. We have here one cup of very finely diced tomatoes and I did peel and seed them. You, I also have one cup of fennel here and you can also see it's a very small dice. I have one yellow pepper that I actually roasted so that it would give off a nice sweet flavor to the dish. I have one half cup of shallots and do you see how finely diced they are? That you want nice and tiny because we're not cooking any of these ingredients other than the roasted pepper, of course. And I have two tablespoons of capers. And over here, I have about a tablespoon of fresh chopped thyme. And I have a quarter of a cup of raisins that I did plump in some warm water. And that's just so that they're nice and juicy and they're not too dry. If your raisins are really dry, you definitely want to plump them in some warm water, white wine, or even warm chicken stock. I also have some green olives here. I have a half a cup of chopped green olives. Two cloves of very fin finely minced garlic. And you do want to make sure it's really nice and small. And we also have a quarter of a cup of pine nuts, which I have toasted. And you see, you have to be careful with toasting your nuts. 350 degrees for anywhere from six to nine minutes, but you don't want them any darker than this. And we will also need some chicken. And today we're using a boneless chicken breast. Along with that, we will finish it off with some beautiful fresh herbs. I have some fresh parsley and some fresh basil, and we will finish off with that. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we want to do is get all of our ingredients together for our topping for our chicken breast. And I showed you all of the ingredients already. What's really nice about this dish is that none of these ingredients need to be sauteed or fried. All of it goes as is. So you just want to start with your fennel and hopefully you did get a nice view of how nice and small everything is because it's not going to be sauteed. It gets topped with the raw chicken and into the oven. So it's all done all at one time, which is really nice. So here's our one cup of fennel and we also have our one cup of nicely diced tomato, which has been peeled and seeded. If you don't want to do this step, you can certainly use canned diced tomatoes if you prefer. And we have our shallots here, which is a half a cup. Let me just grab a spatula. So let's get that. Another onion that you could probably use here, which would really be very, very nice, would be uh, scallions. I think scallions would be good here too, but you want to make sure that you chop it nice and fine. And we also have two tablespoons of capers, which you can leave whole, you don't have to chop them. Our quarter of a cup of raisins, and as I said, you do wanna plump them up. See, they're very nice and moist and soft. That's the way you want them. You could use golden raisins. You could probably even use cranberries if you prefer. And let's get a little fresh herb in here. I love thyme, so we can put our fresh thyme in here. And I'm using green olives here, but you can certainly use whatever olive you happen to have in the house that you really like. So let's put a half a cup of chopped olives and our garlic, two nice large cloves of garlic. And I will go over that with you. I just wanna show you a nice little trick in regard to the garlic, along with our pine nuts. You could use another nut too. You could certainly use a walnut. If you don't have any pine nuts, you could certainly use walnuts. Or if you have an allergy to nuts, just don't put any nuts in at all. So here are 
all of our ingredients. Let's just give this a little bit of a toss. By the way, this would be enough to serve easily four people. And now you want to season this with some kosher salt and pepper and extra virgin olive oil. I would say let's start, I'm going to measure out, let's put a teaspoon of kosher salt in here. And there is salt with the olives, but I still think it needs a good teaspoon, especially for the tomatoes. And let's put a good amount of black pepper. Here in my pepper mill, I have telecherry black peppercorns, but whatever black peppercorns you like. Okay. And I did measure out a nice fruity extra virgin olive oil. I have about a half a cup here, so let's see. And in regard to the yellow pepper, you don't need the yellow pepper. If my idea here with this dish is to show you how you can take all of these raw ingredients and make something really, really nice. And it is really ideal for entertaining because you can just do this ahead of time, pop it in the oven and there's your dish, you're completely done. I happen to have a yellow pepper in the fridge, so I roasted it. I probably wouldn't have put that in raw. I'm a, I wanted to really draw out some sweetness. So when you roast a sweet pepper like that, you really draw out more sweetness. So I'm putting this in as an added, but it's certainly uh, you don't need to do that. So let's give this all a nice toss. The herbs, the uh, basil and the parsley, they only get added to the finished dish. Once it comes out of the oven, we will sprinkle the top, you know, just shower the top with some nice fresh herbs. So here are all of our vegetables, which is lovely. I would say that a good substitute for fennel could be celery. Uh, there aren't too many great substitutions for fennel. And what's really nice, fennel has that anise flavor when it's raw, but when it's cooked, it's sweet, really quite nice, and especially nice with the tomatoes. And there's some really nice bold flavors here with the capers and the olives. It's great. So let's drizzle. I would say the majority, but we're gonna keep some back to drizzle the top also. But you want this nice and moist. Oh, this looks really great. Okay, yeah, this looks good. I think that's enough. And it's mixed. It's important that you really get this well mixed. Okay, so let's put that aside. In regard to the garlic, because I don't want to forget to tell you about this. First of all, this is the other half of the fennel bulb that I used. And I just wanted to show you, there's a very large root in here. You want to make sure when you split your fennel in half that you cut out that root. That's not very tasty and it doesn't cook very nicely. So you want to be sure to take that out. Just wanted to show you that. And as far as shallots go, these large shallots, this one large shallot like this gave me a half a cup. So otherwise, if you have smaller shallots, I would say maybe four you would probably need. And in regard to the garlic, I just want you to see that you really want to use nice large garlic cloves. So I use two of these. If yours are on the smaller side, you probably want to use three or four of them, but a really nice size. And the other thing that's really nice is if you happen to have one of these mandolins, after you peel your garlic and if you slice it, it's very easy to mince your garlic. You can get it super small, which in this case you really do want. So if you happen to have one of these, this is a great little trick to slicing your garlic first and then julienne it and then you get beautiful minced garlic. Okay, so I have a sheet pan here and you can either just brush your sheet pan with a little bit of olive oil or I happen to have a sprayer, so I have extra virgin olive oil in here. So I'm just spraying it and getting it ready because we're going to use this to bake in the oven. And by the way, this dish, uh, you're going to bake this at 450 degrees. So you wanna get your oven nice and hot and we'll bake it in the middle of the oven. Okay, so in regard to the chicken, so here is 
our chicken breast, as you can see. And I just want to show you, you want to get it so that it's going to end up looking, and I will show you how to do it, to get a very nice, thin, large breast, like so. And this is the size per person that you will be using because you want a nice large area to be able to put a good amount of the vegetables. So let me, I'm gonna slide this one down and let me show you how to do it. The first thing that you want to do is slice, open up your breast so that it's fairly thick up at the top part of your chicken breast, the bottom part. This part down here is a little bit thinner, so we're going to work on the top half to get that thinned out. So just take your knife and go in, and you just wanna open it up, but don't cut all the way through. So here we have it like so. Now I have cut all the way through. So now you want to flatten it out. So you need a piece of saran. and put it on your cutting board. And in order for the meat to move a little bit for you without it breaking and tearing, a good trick is to take just a little bit of water and just sprinkle some water right onto your piece of saran. And then put your chicken breast down. Take a tiny bit of water right over the meat and then fold over a piece of saran. And then if you happen to have a mallet, or you can even just use the bottom of a pot, but the thing is you don't want to go very heavy with it. A lot of people tend to really smack it down and smack it, and that's how you really tear your meat. So you just really want to be somewhat gentle, and of course you really want to focus where it's the thickest part. There's always one end of the chicken breast that's thicker than the rest. So you just want to be gentle. And when you add that little bit of water to your saran, it just moves and spreads out without tearing apart. There we go. That's all it takes. And all of this can be done ahead of time. So here is our beautiful chicken breast. So we'll just line that up and we are all set. Let me just take a cloth and wipe my hands. And the other thing you would like to do is be sure to season your chicken with a little bit of kosher salt and black pepper. And you can season both sides. Just wipe them. Okay, so we'll start with some black pepper. And a little bit of kosher salt. And you can do both sides. And now you just want to spoon all of your beautiful vegetables directly onto the chicken. And we will drizzle it with our additional olive oil. Okay. And this is a good time to use one of your, you know, a fruity olive oil as opposed to something that's really astringent or very, very strong or peppery, where it really grabs you in the back of your throat. You want something a little more fruit forward. 
here. And it looks like a lot, but as you could see, that was just one chicken breast. And if you wanted to make this really smaller, serve something else with it, you could split it in half and make them smaller. But here, this is the main course. This is the only thing that we're going to eat. So we're going to eat the entire uh, whole chicken breast. So keep a little bit of the edge of the meat so that it doesn't fall all over the place. Okay. I think this looks pretty good. We have plenty of filling here. And this bakes in the oven, I would say 15 to 20 minutes. Let me come around so that you can see the chicken close up. There, all the beautiful vegetables. It smells so good. It's amazing. Okay, and one last step before these do go into the oven. You want to take a little bit of your extra virgin olive oil and just drizzle it over the top and around the chicken. There you go. And around. Okay. And I didn't use all of it. Uh, I would say there's still a tablespoon or two left. So just enough so that you get it nice and moist over the top and around your chicken. And now this will go in the oven, 450 degrees. I'll check it in 15 minutes. In the meantime, let's turn over our board, grab a clean knife, and we can get our herbs all set and ready uh, while our chicken is baking in the oven. Now, you can either just tear the basil. If you are going to use your knife, what you want to do is pile a few together and then just roll it up nice and tightly. And then this way here, when you go ahead and slice your basil, you don't have to chop it to the point that you will bruise it. You're just going to slice right through and then your basil is ready. And we have a little bit more. We'll save that for garnish. And then this is such young parsley. It's beautiful. Even the stems are very, very tender. So if you take a bunch of parsley together in your hand and then just roll it up. Once again, you just want to slice through once. So here's our beautiful parsley. There we go. And that is all set and ready for us. And the dish will be complete. Once it comes out of the oven, we'll garnish it with some fresh herbs and we'll be back here very soon. Okay, see you in a few minutes. Okay, so while our chicken is finishing up, I just have about two minutes left. I just wanted to talk about a very simple salad that you could prepare to go with this to either have before or even after your meal. So it's just baby arugula, and I dressed it with a little bit of red wine vinegar and olive oil, and to it I added some sliced radishes a couple of scallions, very finely sliced. And then I uh, have some orange segments here and then some toasted pine nuts. It's a really wonderful, refreshing salad and it would go great after having this chicken dish. So let me come around so you can take a peek. This literally took three minutes to put together. And once again, uh, if you don't have pine nuts you can use another nut or just leave it out altogether. but it's just really nice to get that crunch you could even do a crunchy crouton a nice homemade uh, crouton would be delicious here too so let's come around so you can uh, take a look and see the salad it's very very easy to put together there you go and radishes have a night i mean they're so readily available right now at the farmers markets they're just beautiful and the pine nuts and the oranges, there you go. Okay, 
So in the meantime, I think I'm going to go check on our chicken. It's almost 15 minutes, so let me go grab it and see how it's doing. Okay, be right back. So our chicken is complete. And it took in my oven at 450 degrees, this took 15 minutes, but it really does depend on how thick your chicken is. If you don't get it as thin as I did and it's a little bit thicker, it may take a little bit longer. It can take anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes, but this took exactly 15 minutes. Okay, so let's just get it on our plate. Okay. There we go. We'll get this one on here. And as I said, it's really nice if you have uh, a fairly wide spatula so it's easy to come off. And then the last thing that you want to do is just garnish it, finish it with these beautiful fresh herbs. So we'll start with a little bit of the parsley. want it to be nice and fragrant. And then our beautiful basil. Okay. Oh, this looks great. Okay, I'm going to come around so that you can see this delicious dish. Here is our chicken. Our Mediterranean chicken with tomatoes, capers, olives, fennel, nice fresh herbs of parsley and basil. Absolutely delicious. In regard to a wine, I think that you can either go with a nice crisp white wine, you could also go with a red, you could go with a, a nice Malbec from Argentina, you could from the Finger Lakes, a Lemberger would be really lovely. Uh, from France, anything from the Cahors region would be really great. So you have lots of great wines to choose from that would really complement this dish beautifully. Well, thanks very much as always. Hope you try this. I think you'll be very happy. Enjoy. See you again soon. Bye now.